because you're both from here, born and raised here, but not only that, you decided to pursue your line of work here and expand access to it. Can you just tell me why? Kibari, maybe you want to start? Why Memphis is a great question because, you know, when you think about Memphis, our deepest legacy is that of music. So having a company that works on recognizing music credits and musicians for their work, Memphis is the right place. Danielle, different industry, yes. but similar maybe story. Yeah, I mean, my story was a little different because I was actually, uh, I came back because I was pre-med and I wanted to wrap up a couple classes. So I was only supposed to come back to Memphis for about a year. And then I ended up getting my, my role at zero to five, 10, um, managing the accelerator and now directing the accelerator. And I think the biggest um, thing that I got from that was just learning how bustling the entrepreneurial community is here and also recognizing as you were saying about music, how big medical devices are in the city here. I didn't know that Memphis was considered to be one of the second largest medical device hubs in the country for orthopedics. So that was interesting for someone who wanted to pursue medicine and who wanted to be at the center of medical innovation. So I, I sort of fell back into the city and fell into a great community and a great environment for that. How did you start to expand what it was that you were doing here, considering sort of the background uh, here in the city. It started with the people, which is really the, the strength of this place. The, the community and the people and people's willingness to reach down and pull you up, um, I think is a really, really great asset to this community. About 80% of venture capital goes to only three states. That's California, New York, and Massachusetts, leaving the rest of the states to vie for the remaining 20%. And to get that here in the South has been a challenge in the past, but any asset manager worth their salt will know that emerging markets are one of the biggest opportunities that are out there today in alternative investments. And so when you think about that, the interior of the country is actually starting to represent an emerging market. It's been undercapitalized for quite some time, and they're starting to see that that's there. Once you get that dollar one in, then the momentum is there, and right. that's what we're starting to see. Exactly, yeah. And I mean, just to piggyback on that, I think that's the work that we're doing at Epicenter as well um, with our, our funding of both uh, small businesses and service-based businesses here, but also our tech-based businesses. So I think as you're saying, that capital uh, aspect is a critical piece of really helping companies to thrive. What are some of the barriers though that still exist for black technologists uh, like yourselves uh, who want to be successful in the field. When you think about technology and you think about tech leadership, the first vision that comes to mind is not that of black leadership. You know, we don't have enough of that face on things. And what it causes sometimes is that since people haven't seen that as much, it leads to a challenge. They think that something, you know, they don't know what it is. It's in the back of their mind. It's that, it's that sort of <laughs> sneaky racism that can happen, you know? that people don't really acknowledge, that's part of it. And to break through that, we have to continue to bring excellence and continue to compete at the highest levels and go beyond to, to break through that and create those uh, key leaders. Do you work on a national level with the music industry? I mean, what's your personal experience with that? I experience that from time to time, you know, and it's not something that is ever really acknowledged, you know, you can't acknowledge it as someone experiencing it. It's hard to put a finger on that when it happens. It's of the imagery, it's of those key leaders that are there. And I like seeing the leadership that's there with Microsoft and with Google now, and we're starting to see that diversity, but we need to see that specifically with black faces black people and leaders. I think there's often the conversation about the pipeline issue of getting more black technologists in the space. And, and I think there's a lot of work nationally that's being done to try and improve or increase the number of black individuals who are getting those STEM degrees or getting those computer science degrees. There is already this concentration and this volume of black technologists that do exist that can be viable candidates for participating in this innovative and technology economy that we're, we're building out and that we're seeing grow. So what are we doing to harness the existing talent and there's often this challenge of oh well they're just too few and we can't find them and I think what we really want to do especially in Memphis and with Epicenter is 
really doing the work of going out and finding this talent, finding these technologists, where they're building, what they're building, and how do we build opportunities around that as well. You know, we need to see folks like Snoop, you know, the other <laughs> night with the Super Bowl and Dr. Dre, and we need to see black leaders putting into black technologists and investing in those technology companies, leveraging their brands, leveraging those identities in a way that fosters it. Yeah, because that's that's the unfortunate reality. I mean, black entrepreneurs are getting, I think the stat is 1.2% of all venture capital funding nationally. How do you see what is happening here in Memphis? You mentioned the momentum for entrepreneurs, for black tech talent. How do you see that having a broader impact in the nation? If it goes right here, do you think we'll see that sort of echo elsewhere? Yes, I absolutely do. When we face challenges, especially in a city like Memphis, we will find a way through. Right. Immersing ourselves in that, acknowledging that, having conversations like we're having today lead to those kinds of solutions. You guys seem confident about it though. Very, I mean, I'm someone who left Memphis and then came back and sort of found my place. And to come back to a city where you're born and raised, I think when you see all the opportunities that are here, you see the great entrepreneurs that exist here, you see the executives who want to give back, you have the chamber and all these organizations that are really committed to bringing this city up and doing it in a way that's equitable and that's a vision and a mission that's very easy to buy into. If we succeed in Memphis and we will and we get that influx of capital and we get more organizations and we get more black technologists then we can be that model of what it looks like and we're stationed to be that being a 64% African-American city so I mean there is an opportunity there to really grow and expand that with the resources that we have here but also calling on other venture capitalists and other investors and other organizations that want to participate in this work and really build up equity, even if you don't have that connection to Memphis, if you feel connected to the mission, you know, really wanted to be a part of it. Hey, thanks for watching Bloomberg Quick Take Now. Subscribe to our channel to see the biggest stories the moment they happen from around the world. And tune in to our 24-7 live stream for global news coverage, documentaries, interviews, deep dives, and shows on the stories that you care most about.